guys, it's Nikki, creator of Nikki's Homemade Crafts. Today I would like to teach you how to make this beautiful rose. I'm making it and having it two leaves right here. I have some wire in it so you can bend it the way you like it. It um, has some wire inside here. We have two different wires we're using and some floor tape. We're making a sepal, we're making the flower, and then we're putting it all together and you can make as many as you like and it's perfect for a gift. So let me now show you what you need in order to get started. You will need some worsted weighted yarn. Here I have some red yarn from Deborah Norville from Premier Yarns Everyday Yarn Collection and it's in a color really red. Then I also have in the color Kiwi. Furthermore, you're gonna need some wires in 18 gauge and 20 gauge. I only used one of the 20 and um, two of the 18. I also have a tapestry needle, my five millimeter furls crochet hook, and some pliers you're gonna need for the wires. some floral tape. I apologize for my camera. It didn't quite focus well, but you'll see it in a second again. And you are of course going to need some scissors. So in order to show how to make this beautiful rose, you're going to need first the really red yarn and then we're gonna get started. So grab your hook and your yarn and I'll show you how to do it and then how to wrap it all up in order to make it look like a rose. It's very easy and I'm just gonna show you a little tiny bit of it and um, you're just gonna expand it to the big amount. So that means I'm showing you a swatch of it and then you're just gonna make it for the entire amount. Remember the pattern is on my website it's a free pattern and you're going to see everything that you're going to need, every stitch on the way. So let's get started. So you're going to have a chain of 61. My little swatch has 11 just to demonstrate how the pattern works. So you're going to start from your third chain from the hook and you're gonna make double crochets. So you'll see in a second how to do this. So let me start with making one double crochet and another and a third. So you can see there's three. So you're gonna skip a stitch and you're gonna repeat that. Three double crochets. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to make a long piece of rectangle that kind of curls up. So again, we're skipping a stitch and we're making three double crochets in the same chain. And you're gonna just do that until the end. So in my little swatch there, I'm gonna finish in a second, but when you have 61, it takes you a bit longer. But I didn't want to show the entire thing because that would just take way too long. It's the same pattern, just a little shorter. But when I wrap up the, uh, the rows, you're going to see the entire thing, of course. Now you're going to chain two and turn. You're now going to crochet into that second of the three double crochet. So you can see there's three of them. One, two, three. On top of that second one is where you're going to place your next stitches as well as that little space in between. It's not a chain space but it's a little space. Again we're doing double crochets and we're doing three of them. So now I'm going to go into that space that was created but it's not a chain space because we didn't create a chain. And we're doing again three double crochets. Then again you're going back on the second 
of the double crochets and you're going to place three double crochets. Now back into that chain that was at that space that was created. It's very simple. It's a lot of double crochets, but it makes a gorgeous rose in the end. So let me show you this again. So you have those three double crochets on the first row and then so you're going to create three double crochets on the second one on top then into that space right there and then you're just going to keep on going. So look at the three double crochets from the first row and the second one on top you're placing three double crochets as well as that chain at uh, that space that was created between those sets of three double crochets. And you're just going to keep on going until the end. You're going to see that your piece is starting to curl up. In my case here, it's starting to make a C. So if you have a really long piece, it's just going to curl. That's totally fine. That's actually what we want in order to be able to roll up the entire piece to create a rose. And here I'm going to go into that very last one and just going to make one double crochet and chain two and turn. So now we're going to create shells. So first on the edges we're going to create half a shell. That means three double crochets. Now we're skipping two stitches, one, two, and placing a single crochet in the next. That makes the shells appear a little bit better. So when we have single crochets between them. Now we're skipping two stitches again. And now in the next stitch you're making six double crochets in the same stitch, which is a shell. Now you're skipping two stitches again and making a single crochet. And now you're going to repeat that all the way to the end. So six double crochets in the same stitch. So that makes the petals of the rose appear nicely when we have these shells. Now we're skipping two stitches again and making a single crochet, skipping two stitches again and making a shell stitch. Now when you reach all the way to the end, you're going to do the first, it's the same thing you did in the beginning. You're only creating half of a shell. So skipping two stitches again, doing a single crochet and all the way at the end, you're going to have a half shell, so three double crochets only. Now fasten off and let's get wrapping to make a rose. Okay, so now that you have the very long piece, we're now gonna make it into a rose. So you're gonna start on one end, it actually doesn't matter, but I am doing it from the end where I don't have my yarn, my yarn end, so I'm starting on the opposite side. And I'm just gonna wind it up like this. You can make it very tight, you can make it a little bit looser. We're going to um, sew it up after we're done winding it so that it won't fall apart. You can do it as you're winding it if you prefer that, but it really doesn't matter as long as you make sure that it's secure. So what I like to do after a while, once I get a little bit more outwards, kind of rolling it a little further so you don't have it going downwards. You can see that I'm kind of laying it over, like how actual roses are, where it's kind of a little bit laying over. So I'm kind of going in a circle right here. So when you're done with that, it's like this. Can turn around and look if you're happy with it. I'm quite pleased with this. So now you're going to hold it like this or just put it down like I do and then you're going to take your yarn. In my case it is the very last one right here. I'll make sure I just lost my little piece right there but that's okay. I'm going to go around Alright, 
So now my last piece is on the outside, but that's totally fine. So I kind of weave it in until I'm in the middle. Don't pull too tight, otherwise it's going to crunch up. All right, so now I'm just going to hold it like this. And I'm going to pretty much go all the way through. Don't pull too, too tight. And then kind of shift it over and keep doing that. Just shift tiny bits until you're completely all the way around. Like this. Keep going. And of course, make sure that you kind of sewing this part in too. Just the last little bit right there. Just keep on going. Sometimes make sure you go a little bit deeper so that you're really getting the inside as well. Like this. And then going to go into the middle again because that's where we're going to end up in the end. So what you can do now is you can look and make sure everything is tight and nothing is falling apart and then you're good. So now let's focus on the leaves. Okay, so now we're going to create these leaves that we're going to attach to the rows. I have a wire in here, which I'm not going to show you how to do because it's very easy. You're pretty much using one of the wires that I just mentioned, which is a 20 gauge. And you're going to fold it in half and just press it through. And then you have this like this, and that way you can actually bend your leaves when you have it attached to the rows. Okay, so we're just going to make one leaf like this. You can make as many leaves as you like. In my, in my example here, I have two that I'm going to attach. You're going to make a chain of 10. Now you're going to go into the back bump because it's the easiest way to do it in the end for the full amount and you won't have that weird gap. So in the, starting from the second chain of the hook, you're going to place one single crochet and then in the next three, one half double crochet each. Now you're going to place in the next three, three double crochets. And then after that, we're going to make it smaller again. So we're going to do one half double crochet, then one single crochet. And now that's half of the leaf. Now you're going to work on the opposite side, which now you're going to realize it's much easier because we went into the back bump. You can actually see your stitches. So you're going to repeat the entire sequence backwards. So one single crochet, one half double crochet, now three double crochets, one in each stitch. Now three half double crochets. And then one single crochet. Then I like to kind of slip stitch to the very first stitch so it's kind of rounded up. And then you cut it. And then you would weave in that end right there. Weave it in and then attach from this side right here where it's the pointy side. You're going to attach the wire as you just saw right here and then you go backwards. Now of course you can turn it around too. I actually have uh, mine the other way around but it doesn't really matter. So wherever you like it's either from one side to the other. Okay and then you're just going to attach the wire and you make as many leaves as you like. So now let's work on the sepal. So the sepal is the part that is right underneath the rows like this. Okay, so we're going to make this one right now. It's very, very easy as well. I'm going to use the same yarn. You make a magic ring and you're going to place one chain and then five single crochets in the ring. Three, four, 
five. And now you're going to pull and close it up. Don't close it up too tight because you're actually going to use that hole. Now you're going to slip stitch to the very first, like that. And now you're going to chain um, four. You're going to place one single crochet in, starting from the second chain. Then one half double crochet in the next one. And then one double crochet. Now you're going to slip stitch to the next stitch and repeat that. So you're going to have five in total in the end. So let me do exactly that. So four chains, one single crochet, one half double crochet, and one double crochet. Slip stitch to the next. You can make this, of course, a lot bigger. You're just adding chains to it to make it a lot bigger. So four chains, then one single crochet, one half double crochet, and one double crochet. Slip stitch to the next. And repeat that. We have to do it one more time after this. And oops. And one more. And then you're just gonna slip stitch it and be done. And you're just going to weave in your ends and then we're going to put it all together. And then you're done with the sepal. Alright, now let me weave in my ends and then I'll get back to you and then we'll put it all together. Okay, so now it's time to put it all together. So I have here now my 18 um, gauge uh, wire, stem wire that I folded in half. It doesn't have to be completely like this. It can be tighter, just a little bit maybe. Okay, so I just did that with my hands. I didn't use anything. So, and now what you're gonna do is you kinda gonna press this through the middle, but you wanna make sure it's a little bit split so that it actually holds. So this might be a little tricky, but it's not too bad. So you kinda go in between, so you make sure it's kinda split and then you kind of press it through until it comes out. There we go. And press it all through, just like that. So that's done. The very first part is done. So now you're going to put your sepal in, like this, simply through. Now, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you, I didn't weave in all my ends kind of weaved it a little bit so it's secure, but I didn't weave it all the way in because it actually helps to secure um, the entire thing when you're using the uh, floor tape. So I'm just going to push this through. This is all I did, right? So you can see it's just still hanging here. Uh, we're going to cut it just a little bit so it's not that long. So just like that. Okay, so now it's the point where we're actually going to use the tape. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to use here my floral tape. It has a little bit of stickiness to it, but not 100%. Okay, so I'm going to start right at the end right here. I'm just kind of roll it around, as you can see right here. And I'm going to make this area right here a little bit thicker, because that's kind of how it really looks like for the roses. So I'm just going to keep on rolling it around. It secures the entire thing and having these uh, yarn ends right here actually makes it a little bit more secure. So I'm going to just go in circles until I feel like this is the right thickness. Okay, and then I can start going down when I feel like this is the right thickness. So in this case, I think it's finally there. 
So now I'm just going to go down a hint. So now you can see the part where it's a little bit thicker, right there. And you're just going to keep on going and in circles, just slowly and gently make sure you're weaving in the ends with it so they don't peek through. That's pretty much what you're doing. So now I feel like this is kind of the point where I want my first leaf to be. So as you can see, I also didn't weave in that very last end right there. So I'm going to hold it like this, kind of like in an angle as much as possible. And then I'm going to start kind of going around like that. And yes, my wire is a little longer, but I can cut that off. And now I'm going to just keep on going. And now I'm going to feel like, okay, I want my second leaf to appear, but I kind of want it on the other side. So I'm going to make sure that my leaf is pointing that direction and then my next one is right here. So I'm going to hold this again in an angle. You can kind of bend it already since you have that wire in it. So it really helps to have that wire in there. And then you kind of go in circles. You might want to go back up to make sure it's secure right in that area. And then you're just going to keep on turning. So now I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, I'm almost at the end. You can see that right here. So I want to now cut my yarn. That is now secured. So I'm going to cut that first. I didn't cut it all the way over here. Okay. And now I'm going to, you can leave it like this and then just keep on weaving, but this one is stronger than this, so this is just going to bend back and forth, so I don't want that. So I'm just going to cut it right at the end right here. This might, I'm doing it all at once, so that might not be a great idea. I have to do one at a time. Kind of like press and then wiggle, press, you can do only one at a time. Alright, so now I'm done with that. Now I'm going to keep on rolling this up. And of course, I'm going to make sure that when I reach the end right there, I'm going to keep on rolling and then kind of bending it. And then I bend it again, just so I'm securing that end so that the wires don't peek through. I'm trying to prevent that. And if you make it a little bit like an angle, it actually looks like you freshly cut it. You know, like normal roses are. Okay, so here's my point where I'm now going to cut my wire, yeah, my wire, my tape I meant, and then kind of just secure it. And this actually stays that way. And now I have my leaves right here. Now I can bend them the way I want it to be. Let me kind of zoom out a hint. Push my stuff to the side so it doesn't show up. So you can actually focus on just the rose. So here's how the rose looks like now. So and then you're finished with making your rose. Very easy and fast to make. Perfect for a birthday present, a Mother's Day present, Christmas or for any other holiday or just because you know you love your mom, your friend, your wife, whatever you just want to make this for. So this is how it looks like from underneath. You can make, of course, add more leaves. Um, I really do prefer adding the wire into it because as you can tell, you can uh, bend the leaves the way you like it. And if you have like a whole bouquet of them, it really is helpful to have the leaves kind of um, bent in the direction that you like it to be. And of course, they won't just hang down. So this is very helpful. And then you have here the sepal. 
and the rose looks gorgeous just like that. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you are going to like and comment and share on this video and the full free pattern is available on my website so be sure to check that out and um, I hope you subscribe to my YouTube channel for any future videos. Thanks for watching you guys. Bye!